Hello and welcome back to my channel where we take old clothes and make it fashion. My name is Pierre, I'm a fashion designer and I want to inspire you to think twice before you throw away your old clothes. So if you're into upcycling, DIY, fashion videos, subscribe to my channel now because I do upload videos every week. So it's 33, 34, 35 degrees, I don't know, I'm hot, I'm sweating already. Luckily we're not gonna use a vegetable steamer or a hot hair dryer today for this project. Or are we? Yes, we are. Ah! <laughs> so fashion means blood, sweat and tears. And I think for today's video, we're totally gonna live up to this expectation because we're gonna do the 3D Shibaro technique. It's a fabric manipulation technique where you basically make textures in fabric by using heat and pressure. So personally, for me, this technique is pretty new. I've not tried it before. That's not true. <laughs> I tried it before, I just didn't manage really to get the result that I like. Guys, that was a lot of effort for a wrinkled shirt with stains and on the way we even lost one of the cute buttons. And a little bit later I will tell you about all these mistakes that I made the last time so that you will not make them in your own project. So first of all you need your garment that you want to upcycle. You need a fabric that is synthetic. If you use a natural fabric like a silk or a cotton you can also make like textures but it will not last. In a synthetic fabric however it will kind of melt in there so that it will stay. So for the heat and the pressure we have the vegetable steamer and that one I bought for five euro on eBay. I think they're really affordable to buy like secondhand. I would not recommend to buy a new one, of course, especially not if you're only going to use it for clothes. So you probably don't want to, you know, like heat polyester fabrics in your steamer and then make food. So I would make sure that you kind of have separate baskets for the clothes. Then you need something to create the texture. And this can be anything that will not melt or break. And in my case, I bought screws because I wanted this kind of fun, spiky effect and create like a crazy pants. And the last item we need is the yarns. I'm gonna wrap each screw one by one in there. I don't think it really matters if I start on the bottom of the top. Wrap the thread around. See if I can get almost to the bottom of the screw. You should not try to be too economical with the yarn because otherwise the screws fall out again. So I basically go all around the length of the screw as far as I can get and then go a little bit up again and then we have one spike of course if you pull too hard there will be like a little hole these screws are pretty sharp so you have to watch out to not pull the screw completely through and make all kinds of holes in your garment that would be a bit of a waste so then i'm gonna go to the second screw you need to go just on with your yarn and not cut it off every time because when you cut it off in between it will easier loosen the thread and then i'm gonna just randomly make spikes in this pants sometimes they fall out you have to kind of practice a little bit how to do this best because well it might look easy but it is a little bit of a trick so this technique you can do so many things with like you can wrap in coins marbles and paper clips or anything for that matter that will not melt in the heat or like break also you can use this technique to basically make a beautiful kind of randomly pleated textures with it. And this technique is also used to dye fabrics. So that's more like a tie-dye kind of thing. Just wrap objects in, then dye the fabric. But in my last try out, I was like, okay, but these spikes look really cool. So mistake number one that I wanted to warn you about is be mindful of the thread that you're choosing, the yarn. In my last, uh, well, let's call it a tryout, <laughs> there I picked basically a red machine yarn and did not realize that that would stain when you would heat it up with the steamer. Basically, my project was scattered in red stains, extremely hard to get out. Well, I didn't get it out. Let's hope we can finish this pants in like one, one and a half day. Mistake number two, I don't think you should eat your garment up multiple times, especially not if you already get like your threads and objects out of it. The shape will not stay in properly. Sometimes your mistakes can be like really pretty or you can kind of work with the mistakes and make it better. This time it just went downhill and downhill and downhill. So 
I know this isn't like an old technique, like it's been done for many years in many different cultures. I just wonder if also people have used it for upcycling. I didn't really have much time to research it thoroughly, but probably there is. But I think it's pretty unique. And don't we all love to be unique? I am unique, you are unique, we all are unique. Very avant-garde, as I like to say, about my own stuff. <laughs> I think it's also quite trendy, to be honest. I feel like it's getting quicker the more you do it, you kind of learn the skill. So, it's the next day. I finally have all my screws in there. Uh, the 300 screws were not enough. I think there's about 400 screws in there. My plan to finish it in one evening was a little bit ambitious. I were like almost 24 hours on, 10 hours of wrapping almost. So I think we can rightfully call this a couture pants by now. I will show one more time how I did it in the end and I think that was attaching the screws in the best way and that is just taking the screw putting it under the fabric then you can kind of take it from the outside so you start at the base then you go up but you don't go all the way up I don't know if you can see this but uh, if I go too far up the thread will more easily like hop off then I go back to the base and then what I did was making this loop putting it upside down over it, repeating that two times, sometimes even three, but I think two times in general should be enough. So now that we have the pressure, I'm gonna bring the heat. Steam heat, I got. Steam heat. Therefore I have my water and vegetable steamer. And then I'm gonna put my baskets on there. That's number two. Then I'm gonna put in my pants. So now I'm gonna set the timer to about 25 minutes and let's hope it's gonna work. I'm sweating. <laughs> yeah, let's get our pants out, shall we? Now I have to be careful to not burn myself. Ooh la la, that's hot. That's really hot. <laughs> now, if you do something like this at home, I'd recommend you just let it dry for a day. It has to be completely dry before you're gonna get your screws or other objects out. For the sake of time, I want to be consistent with my YouTube videos, so I'm gonna use a hair dryer to help it dry quickly. So, I think some screws fell out on the way. But screw that, I'm gonna get everything out and hopefully this was all worth it. That goes more easy than I thought. Oh my. I'm so curious what this is gonna look like when you put it on your legs. That just slides off so easily. Now I understand why some fell out. Try to not be too wasteful and reuse this yarn for another project. I'm gonna keep it in my drawer. That's quite some meters that went on here, I must admit. Uh oh, <laughs> that's more. One. That is stunning. I hope it's gonna look good when I wear it. But I think I'm happy. So voila, that's the pants. I'm really glad with the result, I think. I didn't put it on yet, but I can't wait to put it on my butt and see how it looks when I wear it. So after all, I think all the sweat, tears and, well, hours, it was all worth it. I mean, 
that just looks really expensive to me. If you want to wash it, I would like do a cold hand wash kind of thing. No dry cleaning, of course, no hot washes. Because yeah, I think every heat and pressure that you apply again on this garment will ruin the beautiful effect that cost us so many hours to make. I'm gonna see how it looks on me and I'm gonna make some pictures. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram because I do upload pictures there that you don't see here. And if you found this project inspiring, share this video with your friends. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really enjoyed it today. Hopefully you enjoyed it too. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more because I do upload cool upcycling videos every week. And let me know what you think of these pants. Are you gonna try it at home? I would love to see the results. Hashtag fashion rec on Instagram or just send me a DM. And I hope to see you next time. Bye guys.